the much-anticipated COP26 UN summit in Glasgow, Scotland, has turned tables upside down on Ed and his entourage who were expecting merrymaking at the expense of suffering taxpayers back home. Instead of ululation and welcoming screams expected, when a respected president arrives, the diasporans turned it sour for Ed and his 100-plus delegation composed of relatives, girlfriends, friends and others. Amongst them were well-known thieves, looters and murderers led by Chief of Sinners Dan Budzo himself. What a bunch of losers. The crowd could not wait to vent their anger through the demonstrations. They joined those at home in bemoaning this waste of scarce resources. The money used to get here could have saved some ailing government department or alleviate poverty which is ravaging poor communities in Zimbabwe. Instead they chose to spend on a lavish trip to the UK. To shop till they drop. What a shame. Why not bring a reasonable number considering that all those who came are entitled to a living allowance as they are on a so-called official state visit. This includes those who were there to provide sexual favors to the presidential tour party. Never mind their effect on carbon emission footprint. Contrast poor Ed with other decent African leaders and you will see the stark difference. His Zambian counterpart only went in an economy class with Fly Emirates with just 10 to 20 delegates and saved 1000s of United States dollars to cater for the poor and other essential services in his home country, Zambia. Exiled Zimbabweans rightfully took advantage of freedoms in the UK to register their displeasure at the visit by their former tour mentors. They knew that the president has no interest in the climate change agenda. The evidence is there for all to see. Back home where he has left a mess with sporadic mining and deforestation activities as citizens are desperate to eke out a decent living. As one protester put it, they are breathing life into old coal-fired 1960s trains while other developing nations like Rwanda are embracing modern green technology the exiled Zimbabweans are here because their basic human rights and freedoms are not protected at home. It is madness to imagine that Ed and company can protect the environment when they fail to protect their fellow countrymen. This is the butcher of Matabeland and Midlands who oversaw the massacre of over 20,000 innocent civilians for opposing ZANU-PF in its quest for a one-party state. A leopard does not change its spots, and true to form, no sooner was Ed installed as president than he had his first victim by directly or indirectly ordering the army to shoot and kill an innocent protester back in 2017. In broad daylight in the full glare of African and Western media. This was soon followed by numerous abductions, disappearances and murders of human rights and political activists in Zimbabwe. Yet here he is in Glasgow. Well-suited and oddly scarfed at the COP26 August gathering. What an embarrassment. Worse was to follow. He was soon observed on live TV footage addressing more chairs than delegates when his turn to take to the podium came. Poor chap, he does not even speak like a lawyer, more like a funeral director at the end of a busy day. That is not surprising considering his other day job of haunting and killing those who yearn for freedom of expression like journalists. Most of the protesting crowd who turned up are Zimbabweans living in exile, having escaped more than four decades of ZANU-PF misrule, mass murders, torture and genocide. Since 1988 and his party have waged a war against the citizens of Zimbabwe, force-feeding them their warped ideology. Ed and his ZANU-PF government are quick to unleash violence whenever their grip on power is threatened. Peaceful protests are viewed in the same light. Dabbling in opposition politics is tantamount to treasonous acts. When people try to air their grievances and concerns over poverty, corruption and rigged elections, they are met with police brutality. Then he has the audacity to attend COP26 summit as one who cares about the environment. Ed and party only came to cleanse their international image by attempting to present their softer side in a bid to win the heart of the international community. This is his way to push for the re-engagement agenda to end international isolation which started in the Robert Mugabe days. Perhaps this might mark the end of their pariah status. Hence he put on a big show by hiring an expensive aircraft, the Airbus corporate jetliner registration number 4K8888. Poor Ed had even hoped just to touch the British premier's hand Boris Johnson who, on the other hand, seemed have no time for him. Stephen Chan, professor of politics at SOAS, University of London has another story saying that Bojo has only time for serious players like the French president, 
Emmanuel Macron and India's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi. Imagine a whole president sheepishly smiling, just to meet a white premier, and awaiting his turn like a good schoolboy at assembly. Getting excited over nothing like a village boy on a first trip to the City of Lights. Ed should be ashamed of himself as he is still displaying his colonial hangover mentality. And the Zimbabwean delegation sitting in classroom style being lectured on basic economics. Akini so, then on arrival back home the rented crowd does not disappoint. Waving and shouting at PFEE ad nauseum. Wait till he orders the bootlickers to go out and stage demonstrations for the removal of sanctions. And they will oblige as usual for they know no better. Isolima so. To my fellow countrymen please do not be fooled by the tired sanctions mantra. Manyepo. For us, the real patriots, it is cry the beloved country. Yet there is hope for this once promising nation. Come 2023, vote for Zapu. Let us register to vote and kick this lot out of power in 2023. Unini time basa.